This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Hi everyone, in this video we're doing a painting of a bunch of capybaras and I kind of like to call it the group hug of capybaras. It's just a stack of capybaras all on top of each other, just kind of like cuddling and uh, there's a bunch of leaves and stuff around them. I drew this sketch a while ago and it was originally just gonna be like a linear drawing for a tote bag design in the future. But I was like, I also kind of want to see what this could look like as a painting. And what you're seeing in the beginning is me tracing over my digital sketch. I like to do colored sketches of my, uh, what, what I plan on painting so that when I actually go to paint it, I know exactly what I want it to look like. And I don't need to do any like trial and error with the colors. I can kind of follow the guide I've made for myself. And it makes the process a lot easier because you can't really undo stuff that's traditional art. You kind of have to be very like confident with the colors you're putting down. And it was already laid out in front of you. It makes it so much easier to actually like bring the painting to life and bring it to completion. And I decided to approach this painting a lot differently than I normally do. And I'm still not really sure if this is a technique that I want to continue doing, but I decided, you know what? I usually start my paintings by doing watercolor and I do like a watercolor underpainting and then I go on top with all my dry media, like the pencils and the pastels and stuff like that. But I decided this time to sort of build it up with my pencil crayons and my pastels to start. And then I ended up doing watercolor on top and it was pretty experimental, but I do, like the way it turned out, there's a lot of cool textures and I think it's something I can make work in the future. But I honestly don't know if it's any better than me just like doing watercolor. Like I think starting with watercolor is a little bit better because I can get a nice smooth lay down of a base color and then I can work my textures on top of that. Um, but it, it was fun to do something different for a change and to not have to worry about doing washes of color and there's something less stressful about dry media because it, it's not going to, um, like you don't need to worry about the drying time. You don't need to work quickly. When you're working with watercolor, you kind of need to work fast to make sure that it doesn't like dry unevenly and that there's like splotches everywhere. So um, doing dry media, you don't need to worry about that. You can go at your own pace, take your time, take breaks, but with watercolor, you have to sort of be a little bit more calculated with how you lay the color down. And um, you kind of like, I always feel the sense of urgency when I'm using watercolor. You have to like, you have to plan it out a little bit more, but with pencil and pastels, like I'm using here, I just kind of like slowly built up the layers of color and it was pretty relaxing to do it this way. I wish like I did this, uh, the, the only thing I don't, I didn't really like about it is that I didn't like do an under painting like a wash underneath everything. I think the white of the paper was kind of too harsh. I, I should have started by painting the whole thing like a yellow or orange or something to work with. I think if I were to do this again, I'd probably start by doing that. Not necessarily coloring in every single object its own color, but I would like, like I wouldn't like color it in like an underpainting. I would just kind of loosely drop some sort of color to stain the paper so that you can work on top of that. And then it sort of automatically unifies everything and it just gives you something to work with. It's kind of hard to work against a white piece of paper. So that's like a, a cool technique to try if you are doing something like this. You should probably stain the paper first, like just put down a wash of yellow something that sort of fits the overall theme of the piece that you're hoping, like the overall color palette, but it just gives you something to work with. And I, I was having a lot of fun blending the colors together and seeing how the wax pastels interact with a uh, pencil crayon, because it's actually pretty fun to put the pastels down and then use pencil crayons to go on top, and it sort of changes the texture and blends them a little bit, and it kind of like it's just really cool to see how they interact with each other. Um, I think doing the lighter colored capybaras were 
was a bit easier than the darker ones because the darker ones were really fighting with the white paper. It looked too contrasty, like when you see gaps of paper between the like strokes of the pastel, it's like such a difference between the dark brown and the white. But with the lighter capybaras, it actually looked pretty good. So I guess if I were to do this technique again, maybe I would color the darker ones a darker color just to give me something to work with because otherwise it, they look a little bit too scratchy. Like there's not enough, like the white and the dark brown just have too much contrast. But for the lighter capybaras, like the, uh, the sandy colored ones, um, I think it actually worked pretty well. And I think it would have looked even better if I did like a yellow wash or an orange wash of watercolor underneath. I also like to use hair dryers when I do watercolor stuff. It just really helps to dry the paper faster and you can just keep working if you're in the flow and uh, you're, you're in the groove of drawing. Um, hair dryers are a great thing. And if you're wondering what pastels I'm using, I'm using the Caron Dash uh, Aquarelle 2 pastels and um, I also wanted to make sure I incorporated some greens in the capybaras because the background had a lot of green plants and I didn't want it to be like brown and green and like two separate colors. I think it's nice to let the colors mingle between each other. Now to thank this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. As you probably know, Squarespace is an online platform where you can make your own website, your own portfolio to showcase your art. You can use it as a blog. They even have e-commerce tools to have an online shop. There's so many templates to choose from, and I think they're a great starting point. If you don't know what you want your website to look like, it's great to pick a template, customize it, change some things, and really make it your own. That's what I did for my website, and the process was really easy. Another feature that I recently started using was their Fluid Engine Editor, and basically this means that all the elements on your page snap to a grid. It just makes editing your website so much easier because you can place things wherever you want on the page and they all align to the same grid. So it looks organized, but there's also a lot of freedom with where you can place elements. If this sounds interesting to you, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash gel arts for 10% off your first purchase. Now on to the rest of the video. You might also be wondering why all the capybaras are different colors. Cause like usually they're kind of all just the same color. I wanted there to be some contrast because when you're drawing stuff, you can really like make things whatever color you want. You don't have to follow real life so closely. You can bend the rules to fit your like vision for the piece. So I was like, I like to make these capybaras all different colors just to like give some contrast and help with the composition. And I tried to make sure that there were no uh, dark capybaras beside each other and uh, like I tried to sort of space them out so it was a nice like pattern sort of and I gave them all little spots because I think it just makes them look kind of like nicer. It gives them some texture. I like doing these little triangular shards of texture on their backs. It just kind of looks like little spots here and there and I decided I was going to get some water and go on top of the pastels on some of them because these pastels are actually water soluble but some of them ended up being way too saturated. I'm not really like used to this technique, but I just decided to stick with it, trust the process, see it through. And I ended up layering a lot of pencil and pastel. And I don't know if I actually used gouache. I don't think I did um, on top of it. And I got the color to not be so yellow. And I think I blended the textures together pretty well. Um, I'm really excited to experiment with this type of technique a little bit more and just sort of like push myself a bit further because I feel like I've been doing traditional art the same way for so long that I just kind of want to do something new and I think these pastels have been a great addition and also the new pencil crayons that I got. I feel like I've talked about these supplies like in every single video but I'm just having a lot of fun experimenting with them and trying to discover new things and push my art a little bit more. And I'm actually glad that I, that in a few uh, videos ago, I was saying how I want to do more traditional stuff. And since then I've done like two traditional paintings. So it feels pretty good to actually stick to a sort of goal I set for myself. Um, it's just a lot of fun to do these paintings. And this is gonna be the print for uh, July Patreon. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not totally set on that, but I think it will be. Um, but I'll let you know once those rewards are out. We still have the June rewards, the duckies. You have until the end of June to get that package. There's like a cute little um, duck sticker, a duck sketchbook page, which I like a lot. Actually, the duck sketchbook page is so cute. And there's a print of a girl with two ducks. She's kind of like holding one and one of them sitting on her head. It's pretty cute. 
And you can still get those on my Patreon if you pledge to whichever tier you want before the end of June. I have three tiers that include physical rewards. We have the sticker shrimps, we have print pups and bird bundles. So the sticker one, you get the sticker, the prints, you get the two prints and the bundle, you get everything. I just wanted to remind you about that in case you had your eye on it. And so uh, for the next capybara that was dark, I decided to actually like mix up a watercolor paint and go on top of the pastel with that. And that kind of, uh, I think that was a bit better than just like going over the pastel purely um, because the pastels look different when you put water on them. And I wanted like a certain tone for this capybara. So it kind of mixed with the pastel and it gave this nice like grainy texture underneath, but it does make for like a splotchier look because it's kind of like uneven with the with where the pastel pigments are and where the watercolor is and they sort of like settle into the page in unexpected ways and my original plan was to use gouache on top of this eventually as well but i decided not to because sometimes when i start to introduce gouache certain areas of the painting start to feel very like stiff and overworked and like it looks too opaque when everything else i'm using is like kind of like a translucent media um, it can kind of feel heavy and like weigh it down. So I decided I'm not going to use gouache. I'm just going to keep using the pastels and the pencil and watercolor and try to pull it together. And I think I actually might not need to touch it up digitally at all. I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Well, we'll see. Maybe like when I actually end up scanning this in, I'll be like, well, I think I should paint over this a little bit digitally because sometimes I like to mix digital and traditional. I get as far as I can traditionally and then once I've done enough I scan it and then I work on it in procreate a little bit just to bring it to its final form what I envisioned it to be and it usually ends up looking a lot better that way and I think it's okay to mix media like this um, and I decided to add a yellow background because I just think it needed something and it always needs like some sort of color wash in the background if it's like a what's it called? A spot illustration like this with like a, a loose edge. I don't like to leave the background white. I like to pick a color that will sort of go with it. It's usually yellow. It's pretty much always yellow, but it just gives this nice warmth and um, helps tie everything in. And I had a lot of fun using my pencil crayons. I was using the Fabric Castell Polychromos and the Prismacolor Premier uh, Softcore pencils. And I was using a mix of the two depending on the look I wanted and the colors that I had available. And it was a lot of fun to build up the painting with these and like really go in with the pencils and like shade and like, I'm just having so much fun with the Faber-Castell ones cause they're kind of new to me and they have a different texture than the Prismacolor ones and you can get like finer details with them and like more consistent texture and like the, the point holds its shape so much more easily. So I've been having a lot of fun with them and I got my replacement package um, because I ordered a bunch, but they left out five colors. I think I ordered like over 20 and they, they missed five of them. So I got those in the mail. So I used some of them for this painting and it was a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, I really liked the way this painting turned out. Uh, I'm not like a hundred percent on it, but I'm, I'm like pretty happy with it considering I tried a completely new technique that I don't normally do. And I feel like I really pushed myself um, with my media that I usually use. And I sort of like switched the order of operations of how I usually do paintings. And it was pretty fun and satisfying to see it all come together eventually. And who doesn't love capybaras? I love drawing them. And I'm just like really excited to do more paintings like this and just like really get into the details of the foliage and like it'd be fun to do a floral piece like this and not just um, plants. I think I was going to add flowers to this actually, but I totally forgot about that. I also realized uh, in the beginning I was doing pencil work that didn't really match the rest of the drawing. Like it was very thin and like not very confident and it looked kind of strange next to everything else. So I just went over the pencil lines and tried to like smooth it out instead of like the pencil lines being one like stroke I would like go over it multiple times to thicken it and sort of like painted the line well not paint I like drew the line like filled it in and made like all the lines look nicer kind of like a line sculpting and uh, I think that really helped it was in the bottom left part 
that you might be able to see like the lines kind of look thick and it doesn't really look too good um but I think I ended up pulling them together in the end and it was pretty fun to see it come to life like that and uh I had a few pastels that I would go over other like areas to sort of like add layers of color on top really easily because the pastels are very thick and you can basically color on top of dark colors with light colors and they will show up really well. So I use them to sort of tie everything together and go over areas that didn't look too good. And I just really like them. It's so nice to have them in my arsenal of art supplies now. And um, I really like, I, I honestly really enjoyed working on this and I hope that you enjoyed seeing me do it. And uh, maybe it'll inspire you to try a new technique or a new workflow for your usual art and see what can happen. Um, I, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and let me know what you think. I also really like the colors that I use in the foliage. There's a nice variety of blues and greens and I think it came together pretty nicely. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed doing this painting and I will see you in my next one. Bye.